According to Wall Street Journal, one of the most thought after private islands in the country is available off market for $120 million. Now, in this video, I'm going to cover the basic offering, what you're going to get for $120 million, but also who the ideal buyer could be for this island and who should stay away. At the end of the video, I'm going to introduce a design element to this island that will significantly increase its value in the future if they decide to implement it. So make sure you watch to the end. I know what you're thinking. Arvin, where is this island and why is it $120 million? Well, let me show you. Here's your beautiful island. It's called Tarpon Island. Now, if you don't like the name, you can probably change it if you pay $120 million for it. It's east of Everglades Island, which is right here, and it's located on Intracoastal Waterway, which I believe it's over here. Now, what are you getting? I believe you get a helipad. That's what it should be. And here's a tennis court on this side. Now, the structure itself is very beautiful, but it's very dated at the same time. It was built in 1939 and it only has five bedrooms. You got 12,300 square foot of living space and it's got a Caribbean influence to it, as you can see over here. Now, you got a dock for your boat access. You're going to need this because this bridge, a private bridge that you own, would be your only access to mainland Palm Beach. Now, guys, this is really interesting. I believe, I could be wrong, but there's two layers of hedge, very tall hedge, and there should be a fence in between. And that's why you see that separation, which is fantastic for security. Now, what you're paying for is 2.27 acres of flat land, prime land in Palm Beach. And guess what? It comes with plants because about a few months ago, three developers bought this property together and got the plans for 25,000 square foot mansion. Now, you can either buy it and do your own magic with it, or you can purchase it and ask them to build it for you. Now, the renderings are beautiful, and I'm about to show it to you, but wait till the end of the video because I got a couple ideas that I think it will blow your mind. Let's take a look at the rendering. Now, as beautiful as these renderings are, there are certain elements about this design that I absolutely dislike. But first, let me tell you guys what I really like. I love the fact that you have a 120 foot swimming pool. You need that scale to match the island and the structure itself. I also like the fact that they kept the tennis court where it is. It's a good location to be and it's a good cost saving measure. I also like the putting green and the sand traps. You know, it brings that golfer buyer pool, which is necessary, but that's where it pretty much stops for me. And I'm going to explain why. First and foremost, if you trust dirt.com, according to this article, this structure only has the main house, which is right here, only has three bedrooms. And the rest of the bedrooms, which, you know, has somewhere, I think, 11 bedrooms on the, on the total property, is divided between the guest houses. That would be a major design flaw for me. For a $200 million house, you would expect to have at least five bedrooms in the main house and four of them on the same level. That would be the absolute minimum. And let let me explain why I say a $200 million property because you buying the dirt for $120 million with plants and then you're going to spend another $40 million building and renovating the structure. You would expect to sell it for at least $200 million with that much investment, right? So that's just not up to the caliber. I also think a six car garage is just not enough for a $200 million buyer and draws me to the last element, which I completely dislike this hexagon shape element over here. It does not go with the rest of the architectural design. Architecturally speaking, I don't feel like it has a character or identity of its own. And this hexagon just throws everything to another whole tangent. Now, let me expand on who the ideal buyer is and why that is a problem. The ideal buyer for this property would be either a tech billionaire from you know San Francisco, Bay Area, Silicon Valley, a media mogul from Los Angeles, or a finance guru from New York, right? That's where we're seeing the traffic to go to Palm Springs. They're saving the money on their taxes and the weather and all that jazz, which is fantastic. I would have hoped to see at a project this scale, a collaboration between couple architectural firms to encompass the buyer needs of these regions. You know, maybe a Hampton architect, maybe a Los Angeles based architect to bring these. Because I can tell you as a realtor in Beverly Hills, these designs are just not up to par with what we see over here. And the billionaire clientele that we come across to is completely sophisticated. They've seen it all. They have a fantastic taste. They have a very mature taste and they are very, very picky. 
All right, here's the most exciting part. A design element can change everything. If you've been following the 40, 50, 100 million dollar mega mansions, each one of them has something that the other ones don't. Now we have a lot of opportunities here. You can argue and say, Arvin, we can put a sand volleyball court over here. I agree, that would be nice. And we can also brand it as the island and give it branding and marketing. But there's a bigger opportunity. If you change this private bridge to a drawbridge, the lake will function as a moat. And it could be the coolest gift that the billionaire would have they can press a button on their iPhone and literally the bridge will go up and it will isolate the island from all dangers of Palm Beach now in all seriousness I love creating these videos and I put a lot of time into it if you like this content please like subscribe and share it with your friends it will help the channel grow have a great day and see you next week